The new seven wonders of the world are a global list of the most magnificent and noteworthy constructions of modern history, including Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro, China's Great Wall, Chichen Itza in Mexico, Peru's Machu Picchu, Jordan's Petra, India's Taj Mahal, and Rome's Colosseum. Aside from these seven amazing monuments, the list also contains the Great Pyramids of Giza, which have been given special recognition. Much about these gigantic pyramids is still unknown, and it is unclear how they were constructed. There are a slew of ideas, including the ridiculous notion that it was dropped on Earth by aliens. However, the riddle may now be solved. We'll show you why this simple photograph might hold the key to unlocking a millennium-old mystery. In this video, we'll know more about the secrets of the world's seven wonders. China was home to one of the world's oldest civilizations. People say that the early Chinese invented many important things like paper and gunpowder, and they started building the longest building ever made by people. The Great Wall of China is 21,000 kilometers long and goes through more than 400 towns in northern and central China. But contrary to what most people think, it is not one single structure. In reality, it is a group of fortifications and bulwarks that were built between the 8th and 5th centuries BC. At the same time, China was broken up into smaller states that were always fighting to get more land. Because of all these outside threats, the leaders of these smaller states began to build high walls to keep people out. By the 3rd century BC, the warring states had united under the Qin dynasty, and the emperor of that time set out to extend the wall and connect some of the sections that were already there. But the most famous parts of the wall weren't built until the 14th century, when the Ming dynasty took over. That's about 700 years later. During that time, almost a third of the wall and some of its strongest parts were built to defend against the Mongol tribes. The materials that were used to build the Great Wall were very different depending on the terrain the wall went through and the materials that were available in the area. Many parts of the wall were made with rammed soil and wood, but the strongest parts were made with marble, bricks, and a secret ingredient that has kept the wall standing for so many centuries. The secret ingredient is a mortar that isn't very common and has sticky rice in it. During the Ming Dynasty, it was used for the first time. It was just as strong and waterproof as cement and it sealed the bricks so well that weeds couldn't grow between them. A lot of the buildings from the Ming era are still standing today even after earthquakes and bad weather. But it wasn't easy to build the longest structure made by people. Often, big stones and bricks had to be moved to the tops of mountains and over rough terrain. Without strong tools, workers could only use their hands, and they often had to walk several kilometers, which led to many deaths from hunger and exhaustion. Because of this, a lot of workers died while building the wall. Today, we can only make rough estimates, and some articles say that around 400,000 people died. The Great Wall of China shows how skilled and hardworking millions of workers were. Many parts of the wall have stood the test of time and still get over 10 million visitors each year. But this could also be a problem in the long run. Even though new kinds of mortar and stone blocks have helped keep the wall in good shape, not all of it is in the same good shape. Over the years, bad weather caused about a third of the wall to fall down. People's actions, like villagers stealing building materials and too many tourists, have also caused the wall to fall apart. Even though some parts of the wall have been destroyed, its size has led to many popular myths, such as the one that says it can be seen from the moon. However, this story is not true. People first said that it could be seen from the moon in the 1930s. At the time, no one had been to the moon or even space. Neil Armstrong was the first person to walk on the moon. He was asked many times if he could see the Great Wall from the moon, while he could see continents, lakes, and other bodies of water, he couldn't see any man-made structures. Next, we find out what happened to a world wonder that was left alone and hidden for hundreds of years. Machu Picchu In the Andes Mountains of Peru, 2,400 meters above sea level, there is a strange city in a beautiful natural setting 
that was once home to 300 to 1,000 people. Machu Picchu is a historical site from the time of the Inca Empire. At its height, the Inca Empire was the biggest empire in America. The city was built in the early 1500s, and its ruins show how good the Inca civilization was at the building. The city's ruins are made up of 200 buildings that are all made of finely carved granite stones that fit together without any mortar. They were put together so well that you can't even fit a piece of paper between them. And because of that, the buildings were much less likely to fall down when there was an earthquake. If there was an earthquake, the stone walls would move a little and then settle back into place. This keeps the building from falling down. Since Peru is a place with a lot of earthquakes, this way of building is probably why most of the buildings at Machu Picchu are still standing. But why did they build this city so far away and why did they leave it? Many researchers think that the city was built as a place for the Inca emperor to live and for the wealthy to go on vacation. Others have said that it was the perfect place for the emperor to hide in case there was an attack from another country. Since the Incas thought the mountains around them were holy, it could have been a place to worship to honor the landscape. This would also explain why Machu Picchu has so many temples, like the impressive Temple of the Sun, which was built with great care and only the best materials. No one knows for sure why Machu Picchu was built, but it is known that people didn't live there for very long. Less than 100 years after Machu Picchu was built, in 1528, the Spanish started to take over the Inca Empire. The people who lived in Machu Picchu left the city because they were afraid of looting and destruction. In order to keep the city safe, they burned down the forests around it so that there were no more paths up the mountain. And what they had planned worked. The invaders from Spain never found the city. Many of the other big Inca cities were destroyed after the Spanish won in 1572. Vilcabamba, the last Inca city to fall to the Spanish, was part of this. But because Machu Picchu was not written down and there was no obvious way to get there, it was never seen. After more than 300 years, an American explorer and historian named Hiram Bingham led a small group to Cuzco with the hope of finding Vilcabamba. When the explorers got to a small town near Cuzco, they asked a farmer there if there were any old ruins nearby. The farmer told them about the large ruins high in the mountains, and on July 24, 1911, the explorers rode mules along the trails to get there. Bingham thought this was the lost city of Vilcabamba, but it wasn't, and the ruins came to be called Machu Picchu. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon before we go on, so you don't miss any videos. Machu Picchu is one of the most visited and important places in the world. It was first found more than 100 years ago. For the last wonder of the world we talk about in this video, we go back more than 5,000 years to when ancient Egypt, one of the most advanced civilizations in history, grew up along the Nile River. Even today, people admire their culture and the progress they made in math, language, medicine, and architecture, among other things. The Great Pyramid of Giza, which is one of their best works, is still around today and continues to fascinate people all over the world. This huge building took only 27 years to build and was 146.5 meters tall when it was finished. It was made up of 2.3 million blocks that, on average, weighed about the same as an SUV. Some people still think it was built by aliens, which shows how far ahead their time was. When it was built, the Great Pyramid looked very different because it was covered in smooth white limestone. The shiny covering hid the pyramid's center and made it shine in the sun of the desert. The capstone at the top of the pyramid was covered in gold, giving it a beautiful look that could be seen for many kilometers in every direction. Over time, the shiny stones that made up the casing became loose and were taken away to build the Cairo Citadel and mosques all over the capital. So, the Great Pyramid of Giza is now 138.5 meters tall instead of 142 meters. 
How did they get these huge stones from the quarry, move them, and put them in place without modern tools? Most of the blocks were taken from what is called the central field, which is close to the pyramid. People think that the blocks were moved through the sand on wooden sleds, but when they were pulled through the hot sand, they dug into it, making it hard to move. The simple solution they came up with was to wet the sand first. This made the sand harder and less sticky, which made it much easier to move the heavy blocks to the building site. But the white limestone used to build the pyramid's walls had to be brought by boat from Tura, about 10 kilometers to the south. And what's really amazing is that the researchers found that about 8,000 tons of granite stones came from Aswan, which is about 900 kilometers south of the Nile. They were used to build the king's room. Each block could weigh up to 80 tons, which is about the same as 12 African male elephants. As the building went up, the next challenge was to put these stones in exactly the right place. Scientists have come up with a lot of different ideas over the years. Most of the theories are about how ramps are used. Without cranes and other modern construction tools, ramps are thought to be the only way to move the huge stone blocks up to the top of the pyramid. The first idea is that they used a single straight ramp on one side of the pyramid that was raised as it was built. For such a ramp, the slope couldn't be steeper than about 8% or else it would be too hard to pull the stones up. However, that means the ramp would be about 1.8 kilometers long. Building a ramp like that would have been a huge job, maybe even harder than building the pyramid. A ramp that went around the outside of the pyramid to the top would be the second and more efficient way. The problem with this kind of ramp is that the corners wouldn't be finished until construction was over. This makes it hard to carefully measure the angles at the corners and almost impossible to make sure that the corners are straight and meet perfectly at the tip. The existing explanations didn't work for French architect Jean-Pierre Houdin, so in 2003, he came up with a new one. After researching and making these 3D models for about 7 years, he realized that an outside ramp could only be used to build one-third of the pyramid from its base. For the rest of the building, they could have used corkscrew-shaped ramps inside that go up to the top. This would make the ramp for the first third much smaller and make it easier to line up the corners. And there is even proof that this is true. Microgravimetry, which measures how heavy something is, was used to scan the Great Pyramid of Giza in the 1980s. At the time, they looked inside for secret rooms but couldn't find any. But in one of their pictures, it looks like the lower density spiraling around the pyramid could be explained by the internal ramp theory. What you can see here are less dense parts of the pyramid. This could mean that the pyramid was built with the help of tunnels. Unfortunately, these haven't been looked at more closely yet, because no tunnel entrances have been found. Aside from the question of how it was built, it's also interesting to know who did it. The Great Pyramid was built by slaves, says a story that was first told by the Greek historian Herodotus. But many studies have shown that this is probably not the case. Archaeologists have found the remains of villages that were built just for the thousands of workers who probably came from places far away along the Nile River in search of work. The slave theory was shown to be false again. In 2010, Egypt showed off 12 skeletons of people who built pyramids that had been found in new tombs. The skeletons were in great shape, and they were buried with jars that were used to hold beer and bread for the workers' afterlife. Egyptian kings and elites followed the same rituals, which shows that the workers were very respected. Even today, no one knows for sure how it was built and maybe we'll never know for sure. But one thing is for sure. The ancient Egyptians had the resources and knowledge to finish this project in only 27 years. This shows how amazing and advanced their civilization was. So, what do you think? What are your thoughts on these mysteries? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked and enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more insightful videos, 
get notified by clicking the bell button below. From the high-end stories of today, this has been Modern Luxury. As always, we look forward to seeing you again in one of our videos. Thanks for watching.